So welcome to another claims video. Today we are still continuing with pricing options using a binomial model. This is part three. So it's a series of videos. I'm, I'm sure I will get to part five or six, but so far this is part three. Uh, and today we are going to talk about uh, finding the value of a European call option. The next video will be about finding the value of American Okay, I think the next video will be about finding the value of a put option, European put put, put option, and then we will move to um, American uh, call and put option. So I think that will, will be video five. So to recap, last time we spoke about um, using a uh, replication strategy to find the, the value of our share. In fact, last time we did calculations about finding uh, the share price in each um, binomial um, state up or down and we looked at multiple um, binomial level so you can have up 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 down uh, up down uh, down up um, down down up down 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 so those are again okay, so those are the again okay, so those are the mighty well, um, binomial um, models. So first of all, we first found how do you find the value of a of a share at each state. So at up state, you will multiply by the volatility um, parameter, and then you find the square root of the change of time. And then for a down state, you're gonna use a negative. So you should. Keep in mind that there is a negative there. So the only difference is that there is a negative for the down, and then there's uh, a positive for the up state. So we say say that at uh, maturity to find the value of an asset, um, you will have to see how much the, the asset is valued, and then you're gonna pay the strike price X. So you will only exercise your option. To buy the asset remember it's a european call option you only exercise your right uh to buy only when you make profit only when the value of uh your stock i mean like of your option is positive otherwise you choose not to exercise and if you choose not to exercise it means that you you gained nothing you lose nothing but you gained nothing as well so your your point is not to lose if you when you buy an asset under a under an option so um we spoke about how to find the value of t i mean like the change of time and we talk uh and we spoke about the timeline as well so if you want more details about this you will have to go back to the last video in video two so um <clears throat> we also spoke like when we spoke about the replication uh, strategy, we also got to a conclusion that to find the value of a stock, I mean, like of an option in a previous um, state, then you would have to use this equation where Q and 1 minus Q are at are, are risk neutral probability, are risk neutral probabilities, and the U and the D are the value. Of the option at up and down respectively and to calculate that uh, artificial probability we used this equation and this equation led us to a point where so this this is what's gonna happen so you have this and you say RT is gonna be minus um, so remember that we say that to find the value of up we're gonna use this equation over here right so for down it's going to be e minus uh, sigma square root of change of, of time so uh, in this case we will just use time t or i can just put the change change of change of time over here and then you will have um s o e sigma square root of change of time minus s o e minus sigma to the power sigma square root of time and your answer at the end is just going to be E um, R change of time minus D 
over u minus d. Remember that we say that this value, you can just call them u and d. You, you can just call this value, you, you, you'll just have s of tk, u, s of tk, d. You can just call these values u and d. So, yeah, so this is going to be your u and d. So previously we looked at an example where we tried to find the price of a share. Right now we are trying to calculate the value of the option. It's not supposed to be the share, it's supposed to be the value of the option. It's the value of the option, not the share. At each node for for a European call option with a strike price of 86. So we're still going to use the same parameters as the last uh, example, like as we did in video two, in part two. So now uh, we already uh, know how to find the change change of time, and we already uh, have found the value of u and the value of d, if I remember very well. So we calculated them. So now we are going to talk about uh, the value of the option at maturity. Remember that you can only exercise at maturity. So what happened at maturity is that you will receive the asset valued as at ST, and then you will pay the, the strike price of X, and then you will, so that, 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 that will be the value of uh, your option. And if that answer is going to be negative, then the value of your option is going to be zero. So this only happens at maturity. But then at any other time, to find the value of uh, your option at, at any other point before uh, maturity, you will need to have the, again, at each node, you will need to, to have the value of up and down from the, again, okay, so if you have something like this, if you have u and d, so you are able to find the the value at this node. So you are able to find the value at uh, k minus one. So this will be at k. This will be at k. So the u and the d basically mean the value of the option. So you can call it v as they do in your node, or you can just call it u and d. Either way, it's fine. So it simply means that the value of your option at an up state or the value of your option at a down state. And already we say that the Q is the artificial probabilities. So to find, um, so this is the e equation. To calculate your risk neutral probabilities, I already gave you uh, the, again, I already showed you uh, the form formula from up there. So this answer is going to be uh, E to power the returns are going to be at six percent um change of t is going to be one of over four as we already saw and then d um the value of d i calculated them down here is going to be uh zero comma nine five one and the value of up is going to be zero comma five one minus zero comma nine five one and your answer is going to be zero comma six four one right so this this is going to be your risk neutral probability and then your one minus q again it is still a risk neutral probability is going to be uh, zero comma what is going to be zero comma three something so i forgot to do this calculation actually zero comma three five nine so um now let's find the value of the share we say that the strike price is going to be at $85, it's actually dollars or rand, either way it's fine. So to find uh, your value, okay, so this, this, this is what you, you will do, you will have 99,45 is the value of an asset minus the strike price, it's going to be at 85. And your answer is going to be 14,47, right? You do the same thing here, 90 minus 85, it's going to be 5. And then you do the same thing here, 
0.43 minus 85. Your answer is going to be negative 0.57. But now, your answer is negative 0 0.57, meaning that uh, you will only exercise if it's positive. So if it's not positive, your answer is going to be, uh, remember, you'll have to, to put the positive over there. So it, it means that your value of the option at uh, DD down down is going to be um, 0. So now you have your values. So what do you do at this note? Like, what is the value of this option at this note? You are not going to simply um, subtract again by 85 because this is not an American call option, right? So you will need to, to discount these prices. And you will also need to include the artificial probabilities as we have already said. And this is the equation you are going to use. So to find um, this price over here, this price over here, we're going to use this equation. So this is going to be at time t1, right? So we basically have time t1, there it is. We have time t1, and then we also have time uh, t0. So we have time t1. So at time t1, at upstate, at an upstate, you, you're going to dis discount the price. You will have um, equals to e the return is going to be 0 0.06 which is 6 percent change of time is going to be 1 over 4 the artificial probability is going to be 0 0.641 i'll have to put the 0 over there <coughs> 0 times the upstate the upstate at, at this point is going to be this this is going to be your up and this is going to be your down so your up value is going to be 14 comma 49 it's going to be 14,49 you'll have um, 14,47 sorry and then the the other artificial probability is going to be 0, 0,35 what 359 times the value of a down state is going to be that and your answer is going to be uh, 10,88 so you are going to put 10,88 over here. So this is going to be the value of your value at an upstate at time 1. For a, a downstate, you em employ the same equation. You put the same values. Again, um, you have E. Make more space. You, you have E minus 0 0,06, which is 6%. Pro, pro, probability 1 over 4 change of time artificial probability is going to be at 0, 0.41 times the upstate now we are looking for this value over here the upstate is going to be here it's going to be at 5 and the downstate is going to be 0 so you will have times um, the upstate which is 5 plus the actual probability 0, 0.35 9 times the down state is going to be 0. Then you choose your equation, then your answer is going to be uh, 3,145. And then you're going to put your 3,145 over there. 3,145. So this is your value. You do the same thing uh, for to find uh, the value of your option at in at inception or at commencement period so when you use the same method you're going to use this value times its artificial probability and this value times its artificial probability and then you discount it back to the present and the answer is going to be uh, at 7,964 so this is going to be your answer for your value of an option at inception so this is how much your option cost at maturity so i will try to do one more example to to explain this now we are looking at a three period uh i had a three period binomial model using the same parameters including the returns of 0, 0,6 of 0, 0,06 which is six percent right so you can just say six percent so um we, we already found the value of an up state and we already found the value of a down state 
So now what we need to do is to find the artificial probabilities. So you employ the same method as we did up there. So you, you will have E, you will have 0.06%. Change of time is not, it's not gonna be one over six. I think this is, this, this is what we have. We had your, we will have um, one over two, right? We, we just six months over three for the period. So it's gonna be one over six. One over six minus d zero comma nine six zero one comma zero four minus zero comma nine six zero and then your answer is gonna be around zero comma six one three and your one minus two is gonna be zero comma three eight seven so these are your artificial probabilities right so um so meaning that uh, at each node you will have the probability of 0, 0,387 0, 0,387 0, and then for the upstate it's going to be 0, 0,613 0, 0,613 0, 0,613 and then now here is down you will have 0, 0,387 here is up, you'll have 0, 0,613. Here is up, you'll have 0, uh, 0,613. Here is down, you'll have 0, 0,387. And you will have down here 0, 0,387. You will, will go up from 82 rent value of the share. It's going to be 0, 0,613. And down, you already have calculated the, the value. So these artificial probabilities are like this. So is the probability of an up or down state at every node uh, okay so anyway we are interested in finding the value of uh, of the option so how much is the option we say that the strike price is going to be at 85 right so if the strike price is going to be at 85 um, it seems simply mean that the value of your option sorry at this point is going to be um, 16 I have to use a uh, I have to zoom in actually. You will have um sixteen comma seven three. Why actually I will tell you why is because you are going to have one who one comma three comma seven three minus eighty five. There's uh the again the strike price which is 85 you only take the value if it's positive and your answer is going to be around um 16.73 you do the same thing at this point you will have 93.75 minus 85 you, you only take it when it's positive and your answer is going to be what it's going to be at, at around 8,73 the same thing here your answer is going to be 14 I mean 1,4 and here you can see that your value is going to be um, 85 minus say 29,63 it's going to be um, negative it's, it's going to be negative 5,37 you will not exercise if your value is going to be negative so you will have to just write 0 you just write 0 so you just write 0 so now, in order to find uh, the prices at this point, um, you need to 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 employ these these values. So, at time t two, you have the artificial probability for up of zero of sixty one comma three percent with a value of sixteen comma seven, and again and then for down you have the probability of 38.7% with a value of um, of how much is it? 8 of 8.7 right so that is the value of your uh, option right and then you discount it back to the price <coughs> so this basically means that you will have D I have to discount sorry I forgot to put the discounting rate it's going to be negative 0, 0.06 D 
the change of time is going to be 1 over 6. And then the at fill probability is going to be 0, what is 0, 0, 6, 1, 3 times the variance is going to be 16,7. And, uh, and then you will have uh, 16,73 uh, plus uh, the at fill probability for this one is going to be at um, 83. Uh, I don't have a scissor. So yes. So this is gonna be your values over here. So um so you, you will have zero comma three eight seven times um times what times uh eight comma seven three. So your answer is gonna be um your answer is gonna be around how much it's gonna be around eighteen. 18,5. So your value of an option at this node is going to be um, 18,5. And then you do the same thing for the other nodes as well. And then you do discount back the value. Remember that this is your value with this probability for up and then this is going to be your value we'll put this probability for down and then you discount it back to the present and then you will find uh, 8 comma not 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 8 it's going to be 5 it's going to be um, 5 comma 8 5 <clears throat> and then you do the same for this one and then your answer is going to be 0 comma 8 5 and then when you do the same for this one you will have 3 comma 8 0 and then you will have uh, 10 comma 4 3 and then you will have uh, 7, 81. So this is going to be your values, uh, the value of your option at each node, at up state or down state or up up state or up down state. Up down state is, is the same as down up state, by the way. So and then you will have the value of uh, at your down down state, which is going to be this value over here. So if they ask you a question about the value of your option at maturity you know that you have four values you have 16,73 8,73 1,4 and 0 this is this is not going to be negative 5,37 it's going to be 0 because you will not exercise if the answer is going to be negative so yes so anyway this brings us to to the end so but then i want to give you a contrast here is that the only difference uh, between a call and a put option is uh, who exercises it. Who is the holder of the option? The holder of the option, of the put option, is the person that is going to sell. And obviously, you wouldn't want to sell your asset, which is, uh, again, let's say maybe your asset is valued at um, 101 rent. And the strike price is 85 you obviously will not exercise that option because you will have no benefit from um can it be because you are running at a loss you will only exercise it when the price is less than 85 meaning that at maturity you will only exercise it here so if this was a put option and uh if this was a put put put, put option and at maturity it simply means that you will not exercise it uh at any other state on this state you will not exercise you will only exercise here if it was a put option you European put option right so yes and again so another difference between an American and a European options is that um, American can be exercised at any time meaning that there is no need to discount their price. You may discount it. So they can ask you to discount it at that point. Then yes, you should discount it. But if the returns are desirable, then there is no need for you to discount it. Uh, because you will still exercise your rights uh, to buy or to sell. And you will exercise it only when you are going to make a return. And you will exercise it only at uh and you can exercise it at any time so there will be no need to discount unless if they specify 
that you need to discount so there are two values that they will use which i think i will go into details in video in video five if i get to that point anyway thank you for watching this video